Hello and welcome to VaporTech. Today we're doing the synthesis of a spin crossover coordination polymer between iron tetrafluoroborate hexahydrate and 1,2,4-triazole. We're very grateful to Professor Chick Wilson and his group at the University of Bath who've shared this protocol with us and who study materials like this throughout their research. The size of the particles that you're going to be making depends on the concentration and the flow rates that you're going to be using. Now the protocol that we were given by Bath will make particles of 100 nanometers. The flow chemistry is ideal for retaining that kind of control of the reaction parameters. And today we're going to be using the VaporTech reactor for rapid mixing. We have seen this before in a different video, but it's ideal for nanoparticle synthesis like this. So before I need the reactor, I need to set up the rest of the system. My reagents are both using the same solvent, which in this case is water, so I only need one solvent pot. My two reagents are ready to go. I just need to load the pumps, fill the backwash, and put the reactor on. So let's do that. To fill the pump with solvent, the first thing to do is put the switching valve into the reagent position. And then using my syringe, I open the priming valve one full turn, and then I pull through one or two milliliters of solvent. Now the syringe is full, I switch back to solvent, and I pull through again. Then I close the valve, just finger tight, and I can put this in the waste. Now that the pumps are full of solvent, I want to make sure that the area behind the pump where the piston moves out into, called the backwash, is also full of the solvent to prevent any kind of cross-contamination issues. And that's really easy to do. Using my syringe, I want to use these two injector ports to fill the void behind the pump. When filling the backwash, it's a good idea to use the same system solvent as your reaction, so that if any material is drawn through on the piston, it stays dissolved and you can wash it out later. So now the pump is ready, I can prime the reagents onto the pump and get ready to start the reaction. To prime the reagents, I first want to put both switching valves into the reagent position. Open the priming valve and pull through about one to two milliliters of the reagent solution. Then I switch back to the solvent and I pull the solvent through the pump. Then I can close the valve just until it's finger tight. And the pumps are primed and ready to go. The next thing to do is fit the reactor onto the R4. The reactor is held in place by these strong magnets and a magnet on the other side of the R4. And to fit the reactor, all you need to do is pull down this small tray and slide the reactor into place. The thermocouple attaches to the R4 into this top port and just screws in finger tight. Now I can connect up the tubing. This reaction runs at just above room temperature and it doesn't produce any gas, so I don't need to use a back pressure regulator. Instead, I've connected directly to the collection valve and will be able to run straight away. So now the reactor system's ready and my reagents are primed, I can design my experiment. And today I'm gonna to be using Flow Commander. All you do is open a new experiment. You have a page where you can input some information about the experiment that you're running. Then you can tell Flow Commander what configuration you're using. Now, I ran this experiment earlier today, so the information is already here. Before I start the reaction, I need to make sure that the reactor is full of solvent, and I can control the pumps using Flow Commander. So, now the reactor is full of solvent, I can start the reaction. So now the reaction is finished, Flow Commander is taking the R-Series through its cleaning cycle, and we can look at the product that we've collected. 